Major John Madden in my camper van in the Rafael Lucio Colonia of Jalapa. Pretty much 48 hours of overcast and rain. That's one of the things that's got me down. And the weather's just been like that here for two months. I said at one point, uh, I wonder, I'd like to love to do research. Doesn't seem to me like people in Jalapa are cynical or, or uh, depressive. Uh, they actually mostly seem kind of defensive about the weather. They'll they blow it off. They say, yeah, the weather's bad, but it doesn't affect them. They just live with it. Well, that makes sense, right? But I, who love sun, and have been in South Texas and uh, along the Gulf Coast of Mexico, where it's been really, really sunny and warm, and I love sun. I've always had a trace of seasonal affective disorder. I don't do as well in the dark winter months. And the last three years I haven't been wearing glasses. I, I broke my glasses and didn't replace them. And so in low light situations, I don't see well. It's all kind of murky. So I don't like that. Uh, I was gonna introduce this by saying, how do I know what I'm gonna talk about? Well, I don't choose it mostly. It's mostly what's buzzing around in my brain and annoying me and saying, come on, come on, write it down or we're gonna go away. I used to say the muse was the jealous mistress and she would go away for a while if I didn't respond to her. That's now that's, I think that genuinely is an example of anthropomorphizing <laughs> a lot of syllables. A word I never have uttered out loud, I think, in my life. But as I was thinking about this talk, I said, yeah, that's what that is. I'm making the muse like it's a person when actually it's just my own internal creative process. And I recognize that, okay, it's ready. This is the time to capture it. So that's why I push the button, even though I've got a warm sandwich waiting for me. Uh... Yeah, I don't get down. I'm a terminally happy guy for four years since I had my waking up experience. But I, I can I can be more low energy and it's partly partly the weather and it is. And I just moved neighborhoods and I was all excited about the move yesterday, but I've been I've had kind of cabin fever today. It's rained an awful lot of the day and I raced outside to shoot a a uh, short video of the miracle of the daylight that lasted for 20 seconds and I missed it. I didn't even have to push my shoes on, but by the time I was out of the van, it was gone. Uh, but uh, there's other factors, and the beauty part is it's teaching me. Uh, life is sending me messages about what's not working. One thing that's not working is I finally am petering out on travel after three and a half years. I've been writing stuff about the three major communities I had in Asheville, North Carolina after 16 years and how part of what made all this possible for me was that all three went away. The wonderful grocery store that I had worked at and still was a part, really important part of my community uh, got closed, got, got brutally shut down by a hedge fund. Uh, the... Uh, church community that had been so important to me for 16 years also exploded uh, fired the new minister brutally after six months it's really parallel uh, with no explanation given and basically 90 percent of the people went away including me so i say it died uh, the, the hangers on try to claim that they're firstly in the lineage but i think it died so that made it possible for me to leave and then the ecstatic dance community that had meant so much to me. Uh, I had a row with a guy who, about my little dog who would ride in my, ride in a shoulder, chest pack at the dances with me. And this guy said, the rule is no dogs. And even though 90% of the people in the one dance that I was really still going to were saying, she's not just your emotional support. She wasn't that technically that, but they said, she's not just your emotional support dog, she's all of ours because she really is good for all of us. But this one guy took a stand, no, nope, no, nope, gotta go. And uh, oh, it just got to be such a mess, it was terrible. Uh, so, so I was ready to go. But 
Those had all been really important and intertwined. My job at, as a cashier at the grocery store, the dancers would come through, the Jubilee people would come through. So it was a very rich community for me and I've been traveling alone with a dog up until four months ago, but now I don't have a dog. For three months in El Diamante, I had rented dogs. I had three street dogs that I developed a very tight relationship with. They were each a quite extraordinary dogs. And we got super close, partly because nobody in that town would touch a dog. 400 person Pueblo, very sweet, lovely community. But that was the pervasive culture. You do not touch dogs and different people had different reasons. These dogs were dying to be touched. And so they just went haywire over me when I would touch them. And I fed them uh, and I protected them. And I went to the mat when there was a killer dog came around, an incredibly violent dog like nothing I've ever seen in all my volunteering and everything. He wanted to kill one of those dogs and I killed him. We did. I said, you're leaving. These dogs are gonna be, he's gonna, he already gouged out the eye of one dog and left a permanent scar on the other in dog fights that had happened over the course of two weeks. And uh, I said, these people are all too gentle. Nobody owns a gun. The idea of actually killing this dog is horrifying to them. Do it. And I did. I stabbed him. I stabbed him. I had to get in a close range and he was aggressive to people. When I hit him with a big rock, he came at me. Yeah. So that was a big deal. So that got us all very, very close. Very close. Me and the dogs. And now I don't have them. Uh, and Jalapa downtown here mostly doesn't have street dogs. I can't even I can't even hand out free meals. Set up the the macho dog soup kitchen, which I've, I've done in a couple of places basically. So I don't have that. Uh, and it's I, I more and more have been saying, oh boy, I do want to settle. I do want to settle. I do want to have a base of operations somewhere out on the Maya Riviera, the uh, end of the Yucatan Peninsula, Cancun, Cozumel, etc. It's a long stretch with many resorts and places in between. And I've said for a long time, I'm going to go out there and spend months exploring it and finding my spot. And I want to do that. I came close to putting it off. Just even 10 days ago, I was saying, I'm going to Cuernavaca, four hours west of here, an hour south of Mexico City, for immersion Spanish training. And then I'll go to Mexico City and San Miguel. And finally, what happened was, no, you're not. You gotta get back to the ocean. You're missing the ocean a lot. You crave, your favorite thing is to be swimming in the water, in the ocean, every day, every day. And it's more swimmable down here than it was in Texas. There was always more of a chop. Here's not as much, I can, I can really swim. So you gotta get back there and you gotta get back to the sunshine and you gotta get back to your agenda of finding a place where you can have community. Uh, when I left El Diamante where I had had really strong community with people also around the family that ran this one restaurant and hotel where I would go for the Wi-Fi. And I became part of the family, went to the quinceanera party, all that. And the one couple had some English and so I had that, but then I sacrificed that when I left there. And then right away went to Moctezuma Colonia, south of Jalapa and got real tight with a couple there who I really jammed with, really enjoyed their sense of humor. But then I moved neighborhoods because I had to find a better, a different mechanic. So I moved Two and a half, two weeks ago, to downtown Jalapa, and I needed to be downtown Jalapa because I knew I, I was missing important experiences. And I love downtown Jalapa; it's very exciting, especially at Navidad season. I love it, love it, love it. But now I've moved to a different neighborhood, and I had a coffee shop in that two-week neighborhood that I really was connecting. So it's like. Oh, the it wears me out, bonding and then letting go, bonding and letting go. And I know it's something that I'm being taught, and it can be thrilling, but it's all hitting me at once here, and I'm going, yeah, you get your car, 
get my car fixed Thursday and Friday hopefully and hopefully it'll leave me some money for travel and Sunday morning the traffic is so bad around here that with my big vehicle uh, I don't feel real comfortable driving except for Sunday morning which is the one really slow low traffic time and that's when I moved to this neighborhood yesterday so yeah I'm down I got all revved up today because I jumped in somebody's shit and that always gets me charged up. It was my, one of my Jalapa friends who finally, one too many times, pushed me that I should sell my car. Unsolicited advice, that's a real no-no for me. So I jumped in her shit big time. And lovingly, but big time. And she took it badly, got real defensive, and I mocked her for being so defensive. And then she turned around. It was astonishing. It was astonishing. I, when I mocked her, I said, you know, when I take the risk of saying big time truth to somebody, sometimes it pays off. They wake up and other times they just give me a whole lot of defensive garbage like you just did. And she got it. She got it. She said, you're right. You're right. She turned right around and whoa, she was amazing. She even apologized for being such a chatterbox and running off her mouth. And I said, you're not a chatterbox. No, that's just the way men oppress women is to claim they talk too much. No, you don't talk too much. I just didn't like what you were saying. <laughs> so that was all energizing. And then the energy comes down. It's not bipolar. It's just that when it's natural, then when you get super energized, then you get less energized. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's pretty much a physical principle. So now I'll have my still slightly warm Starbucks sandwich. I'm in the uh, gringo ghetto.